other things don't be lacking. In fact, the commitment required in Christianity is lacking to a great extent because of lack of this understanding or insufficient understanding of our greatest goal as believers. If you know it and know it well, you will be ready to go any extent with God and for God. Um, everyone in Nigeria you must have heard about the group of people called Boko Haram. These are a set of people who are ready to kill others and kill themselves just because of the hope they have. That they might eventually go to heaven and receive some reward. Which is not true because a murderer has no place in heaven. But my concern is if this hope can fuel people or fuel them to behave this way to the extent of laying down their lives. And it's a false hope for them. What of those for whom it is a true hope? Hallelujah. You know, um, this day of the saint, you must have only if you listen to me every time because I've known that I say this almost every time. Christianity is synonymous with prosperity. God does not want us to be poor. Hallelujah. Amen. God does not want us to be broke. God does not want us to be sick. God has given us a life of victory in this world and in that which is to come. But you see, um, my challenge with this is that many people are so engrossed uh, with the temporal that they have forgotten the eternal. Many believers are so, as true as this is, that God has given us the life of victory here on this earth. Many are already so engrossed with this temporal thing that we get here on this earth that they have forgotten the eternal. Now, you know how the apostles died. Um, someone like Peter that was crucified upside down. This was, you remember in Mark chapter 10 when he said to Jesus, those of us have left everything, father, mother, houses, land, everything to follow what will become of us. And Jesus said that everything I have left in this world that you are going to, for the gospel's sake, for my sake, and for the sake of the gospel, that in this world you are going to receive it hundredfold, and in the world to come, eternal life. Now, this guy was the one who was crucified. If you were the one, would you agree to be crucified? And this is the truth. Until you see what he saw, you cannot accept the crucifixion. Would you? What will happen to the hundred people? Hallelujah. But because he knew that the one that is eternal life is more than the hundred people here on the earth. So he was rooting for the one that is bigger. He was rooting for the better. You know what Paul said? You know what Paul said? What Jesus said? They were trying to hold him. Say, ah, this time they are going to buy me. Say, I'm not just ready to bow. I'm ready to die. One of the times he was with the disciples, and while they were talking, he was like, ah, I don't even know whether to die or to live. And to die is to be with the Lord. To stay is to be with you. To die is better, it is sweeter. But just for your sake, let me just say for a while. Hallelujah. So, someone had that option. None of them that died without money. Someone that had such an option did not count it worthy to hold on to this world and to this life. What kind of prayer? Who prays that kind of prayer that I may know him? That I may know him. Ah, the power of his resurrection, the fellowship 
of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Hey, when I pray that kind of prayer, it is a man who is seeing something. And that's the hope that I'm talking about. That your greatest hope as a believer must not be in their things. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 19, that says, that if only in this world we have hope, then we are all men most miserable. So what's your greatest hope as a believer? I came this morning, this uh, Zoe, the life of God, part four. I came to preach on the time dimension of Zoe. I know that last week I began to mention the dimensions in Zoe, and that last week I took one, which was a victory in Zoe. Today I'm taking another one, eternity. Hallelujah. Eternity. And receive you to myself. 
that where I am, there you will be also. Hallelujah. So he is coming to give us to himself that we will be where he is. That we will be, I mean, physical where he is. That we will be body, body, rubbing bodies together. Hallelujah. What a job. Will be with Jesus face to face. Face to face. So, how many of us are expecting in that expecting help? Hallelujah. How many of us want Jesus to come today so that we can go to heaven? Hallelujah. That's awesome. Heaven is a beautiful place. A very great place. It's a very great place. And you must participate in that heaven. You must look forward to going to heaven. If your desire for heaven is not stronger than your desire for the earth, you need a revival. If as a believer, your desire for heaven is not stronger than your desire for the end. You need a revival. Every believer must look forward, must have his hope. And so I say that everyone that has his hope in him purifies himself. Last week I was talking about um, I talked about sanctification or consecration last week.
Is that what she's to turn out? A key measure of one's rank of living is in this device. A key measure of one's rank of living is the things he values. One who where one is living, whether it is carnal or it is spiritual, change the things he values. Hallelujah. Change the things he values. Hallelujah. Uh, somebody, I was, I was reading what somebody wrote, and when he was talking about the blessings he wanted, after that he said, he's a man, he said, and a beautiful wife to uh, enjoy the blessing with me. And then he said, I, I said beautiful, you heard it well, not spiritual. I said beautiful, not spiritual. When I was reading it, I said, yes, you talk from the realm where you are. You can know. By the thing that he values. A spiritual man will value spiritual things. A common man will value earthly things. So I said that a key measure of one's friend of living is in this he values. You know, that's why I said, you see, all these things that you see, people tend to be deceived. I don't know why. But if you don't put your life, you should not be deceived. The believer should not be deceived. Especially in marriage, that you see that people come to pretend that they are spiritual when they are not. You will know whether somebody is spiritual or not. Who does? Two conversations with the person you should know. Look at the things that matter to him. Look at the things he or she bad. He or she bad. You will know.
that the Holy Ghost who pass through this world that will be in our heaven and hell. And so, what this life we are living now is, is the preparation for us for the real life that is to come. And how you know that it is a rehearsal, it's a rehearsal class, is because of how short it is. Maybe if someone lives long, he lives maybe like 200 years. It's even very rare to hear that someone lives 200 years. I'm just giving it. But let's say it's 300 years. The person lives 300 years. And then he lives this side of eternity. Either through death, through the coming of Christ, or he did like Elijah and then on. Whichever way, you can't stay beyond that. Here on this side of the earth, here on this side of this side of the carriage, in this earth, and then the person leaves. You know, you should have asked yourself, is this, you know, man is the setting of God's creation. Is this what that God spends all his energy and intelligence and everything doing? There are some trees that are in your compounds that have been dead since the days of your forefathers. And if you say that man is the setting of God's creation, would God have made that tree? to live longer than man. I told you earlier at the beginning of this teaching that everybody is going to live forever. God created man to live forever. And that is why you must understand that believers don't really die. They only sleep. But when Lazarus was caught there, Jesus said to himself, Lazarus and friend is sleeping. Let's not wait for Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now it is very important that you understand that man is going to live forever. But now where is going to live forever is to be decided by you. This is where you will decide where he is going to spend that forever. This is where you will decide where he is going to spend that eternity. Is it in heaven with God or in hell with Satan? And those that have Jesus now. They want to have Jesus in eternity. Those that do not have Jesus now, want to not have Jesus in eternity. It is just like maybe when you're in secondary school. You know, secondary school that is, that's not what gives you a job. But that determines what you're going to start eventually that will give you the job. Just imagine someone who did maybe who are in the art department in secondary school. Would he come with this calling of message to study medicine? No. So those who were science, they are not that will come to college of science or whatever. Hallelujah. Amen. So you see that that secondary school was a preparation class for the one that will eventually give you your career. That's what it is. In this life we are living now, these hundred years or one fifty years or two hundred years that you have. Will it be in hell or will it be in hell? Will it be with Jesus or will it be with Satan? That's why everything you're doing now, you must ensure that it's something that matters, it's something that has eternal value. You know, see why Paul said, it is like considered as important before. That was in my day of ignorance, now I can't go for long. And this woman can be in one of eternal value. And the enemy that will have eternal values, eternally useless. Eternally and infinitely useless. Anything without eternal value is useless. I said eternally and infinitely useless. So you must mind the things that you do now with your life, with your time, with your money, with your relationship, with your resources.
He saw all his death, praise all his. I say, just a light affliction. And by the way, he went for us. A man and the eternal weight of God. A man of exceeding and the eternal weight of God. We must just keep our focus on the things that are eternal, which are not seen with naked eyes. Of your 
can do this, I can do that. Uh-huh. So what are the contributions to heaven? You see, everything you have now can have eternal value. It can matter in eternity. If only put to eternal Everything you have now can have eternal significance. It puts eternal
When I went to the law section, don't be one out of you on the law section. See, you can talk. <laughs> See how people that have expressed interest and everything. See how they just step down from you. So he sees him going to commit him to follow him. So he said to him, So that same thing. Instead of convincing him to follow him politics, convince him to follow him in Christ. He was telling me, instead of becoming, jumping in a position, go ahead and don't, don't preach politics, come and preach because people will be following you that way. Hallelujah. And people have been following me that way. Hallelujah. It is true. I, as a student, too, you know, when we evangelical back then, I was um, part of evangelism leaders there in our fellowship. As, and then there was a sister that went with me for several weeks. And throughout those days, I was preaching. God gave me a scripture, Titus chapter 2, from verse 11. I was preaching it everywhere we went. So one day, she said to me, uh, Why there is only one scripture? I always put it everywhere we go. And I responded, Everywhere, is there any place that people that people will not give their life to Christ? Hallelujah. I was quoting it and people were giving their life to Christ. You know, I always tell you, see, we is not about the number, it's not about doing all the scriptures. Hallelujah. Just say what God would have to say. Amen. Amen. And that was it. That same last scripture was winning souls. Because God was with us from very day one. We sang his following. One thing that let them not talk about it. Let them do a talk, we are talking soon. Let them have eternal significance. Whatever you do, whatever you lay away, matter. 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 The eternal value of your family, your friends, your colleagues, your mind. So 
grief so much when somebody is dead is because they do not know God. Which is that even if you don't remember to conform to any other thing, 
confirm any part that Jesus is coming again. And we all are going to be taking to stay with him. We are going to be taking on those who are dead, those who are not. Those who are dead, we went to the life of Christ and then they will be changed. And we who are alive will be called up to them, all of us, to be the Lord in the end. And so shall we always be with him. We will be with him forever. So knowing this very well, John chapter 14, verse 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. What is it that has troubled you? Hmm? Let not your heart be troubled. What is it that has bothered you? Let not your heart be troubled. Let